All right, today in part two of the engine build, we're gonna get a crank out of our hand and get the short block finished. And that's a mouthful for this episode, so let's get started. On the last episode, we got the pistons built. A 347 stroker requires a more compact piston, which also requires an extra step in building the piston called the oil support rail, which is what we talked about in the last episode. We got the pistons completely built. Today, we're gonna get the crank into the block. We're gonna check the tolerances in the crank, tolerances in the rods, and then we're gonna get the rest of the engine assembled if those tolerances play right. So we're gonna pick back up right where we're checking the tolerances of the crank. All right, once we get our plastic gauge in there, we're gonna put all the mains back. One, two, three, four, and then the rear main. And I'm gonna run these down just tight to start. And then we're gonna go from center, working out in Ford's main bearing pattern, which is center, outside, and then inside, uh, to 55 foot-pounds, and then we're gonna go up to 80 foot-pounds, 75 to 85 foot-pounds for this one. We're gonna run this up to 80. I'm gonna give them one more tap before we start. Torquing them down, we are set at 55 foot-pounds. That is 80. Start in the middle here. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for probably about five minutes. Then I'm gonna take all the mains back out and we're gonna check our plastic gauge and we're gonna see what kind of tolerance this new crank has with the uh, old block. The main has a hard time coming out on its own, so I'll just loosen that up and I'll pull that out with the crank. The center main doesn't come out as easy, so I usually just give that one a little bit of a pop of the crank and then it'll pop out. And now checking the plastic gauge in each area, I am right at about 0 .002, so about two thousandths, which is in spec for, it's a little bit tighter in the rear and about the same in the front. So two thousandths, I'm good with that. Now we're gonna clean this back up again and start the assembly. Hopefully this will be the last time that the crank gets put in the block. So we are going to put some assembly lube in here because the engine is going to be sitting for a little while. Don't need a lot. All right, set the crank back in there, hopefully for the last time. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rear main seal in while I'm thinking about it. And I uh, lubricated this thing up with some uh, assembly lube so that after it sits for a while and it started, we're not gonna have any problems. Get it nice and square in there. Assembly lube on all of the caps or on all of the bearings going on since this will be the last time they're going on. All right, arrows going in the right direction. Here. <laughs> all right. Get these things seated. So now that we've got them to 55 pounds, we're gonna run these up to 80 pounds. 75 to 85 pounds is the torque rating on this motor. All right, and then the final thing for the crank is we're gonna test our end play. We should have four to eight thousandths play in this crank, and right now I've got it set at zero. Crank is pushed all the way back. Let's give it some We are right at 4,000, so that makes sense. It's new bearings uh, and uh, a brand new crank, so we should be good to go. 4,000, so I'll take it. The crank is clean. I know I have to leave. I'm gonna do this dry. Put a piece of plastic gauge on here. I think there's a piece in there. 
we're going to use the green plastic gauge which is 001 to 003 we're going to see how this turns out. And then we're going to put our cap back on. On your connecting rods, likely if you're going to be putting in aftermarket connecting rods, the torque values would be on the box or in the instructions. In this case, we've got 8740 rods, so we're going to be tightening those to 64 foot pounds. All right, pull this off and we'll see what we have. So it's in between 0 0.0015 and 0 0.002. So that's probably going to be like a 0 0.0018 maybe. So, and that's with intolerance as well. So we look like we're going to be good on those. I'm going to try the rest of the rods, make sure none of them are specifically out of spec. Now that we got these built, I'm going to saturate this piston in oil and all the rings. I'm going to do the same thing to the cylinder as well. Give it a good coating of oil. I'm going to put it in my ring compressor here. This is one of the adjustable ring compressors. Slide it over the top of the rings. And then it takes a quarter inch drive. To tighten it up. I'm going to leave just a little bit of the piston skirt out the bottom. That way I can line up the bore. Get up big tight. Coat the bore with oil. Very liberal amount of oil. I'm going to rotate the crank this is until, until it's all the way in the back of the bore so that as I'm putting in the piston, the rod's not going to hit the crank and uh, scratch it. Take the cap off. Now I've got this cylinder almost vertical so that the rod ends don't bounce off the uh, cylinder walls here. So I'm going to slide this in. The cylinder won't drop all the way down. But I'm just going to get the skirt set in there to where I've got it nice and situated. Make sure this is all the way down on there. And then I'm just going to give it a couple of taps right into the cylinder, just like that. This is the last cylinder, but if you're gonna be doing more cylinders at this point, it makes it easy just to hit this button right there and get this loosened back out again so you can get around the next cylinder. I'm gonna flip this around just a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna help this rod gently down onto the crank. Remember to make sure that your cap is facing the proper direction. You have a beveled end and a non-beveled end. The beveled end is gonna to go toward the actual side of the crank. So in this case, it's going to go like this. I've already put some assembly lube on the crank, but I'm going to put a little bit more, just a little bit, on the cap. And then I'm also going to put some on the side as well, so that upon startup, riding along the side of the crank is not going to cause too much friction before the oil gets in there. We're going to get that started. All I've done is snug these up. None of these are torqued to spec. So we're going to be tightening those to 64 foot-pounds. I'm going to be doing it in two stages. So I'm going to cut that torque in half. So I'm going to get it to 35 foot-pounds. Then I'm going to draw it up to 64 foot-pounds. Now I've already torqued these once, loosened them back up again. And then now I've torqued them down again. And I put a little bit of oil on the threads to make sure that they are reading accurately and they don't catch, give me a false reading. So this will be the last torque that I do. To finish the lower part of the build, we're going to add a new standard volume oil pump. We're going to torque the oil pump bolts to 23 to 31 foot-pounds, 12 to 18 pounds here on the pickup, uh, where the pickup tube meets the rod, 39 pounds. And then lastly, we're going to put in, before I put on the oil pan, I'm going to go and put in the, the freeze plugs. side and uh, put the freeze plugs in both ends and then last I'm not gonna put the oil pan on permanently right now when I do I'm gonna put some gasket uh, maker in the corners here that way I can get it sealed but I may be taking this oil pan off again so not yet but I'm gonna use the stock Explorer pan since it's in good shape I've cleaned it up reasonably well and then 
we're just going to slide that back on there. Now that we got the pan in, we're all, I'm only going to put in a few bolts just to hold the pan on. And then we'll flip the engine around and get it ready for cam, uh, cam lifters, things like that. Uh, so we can get the center part of the motor done. And then it's on to getting the heads ready. Woo! That was a long time coming. We are done with the lower rotating assembly of the engine. And now it's time to get the camshaft and the lifters put in and get the lifter valley all finished uh, before we port the heads, install the heads, port the intake, install the intake, drop it in the chassis, and then we're, we're going to keep going there. So this is a sneak peek at the cam that we chose for the 347 stroker. I know you know now it's a comp cam, but you don't know which one. And that will be in the next episode. Thanks for hanging out with us for this build. Please comment below on anything you think might have been right or wrong with this engine build or even just words of encouragement. It would be much appreciated. And check the end screen for the other three years of Bronco videos and the full restoration of this vehicle.